Yeah, as uh, uh, lawyers and judges, uh, in some way we get uh, uh, typified as a specialist in something. So you, uh, when you introduce a lawyer, you say he is a, a popular civil lawyer, criminal lawyer, a constitutional law expert. In the same way, about judges, uh, in some way, we all make generalizations. You say he is, a, he is an expert in something. So therefore, he is an expert and some law is a manner of knowing that he is fit to talk about something. Uh, this, uh, 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 just now you heard uh, uh, the introductory talk where we said uh, the sexual harassment, uh, the serious concerns were there in the year 1980s and 90s and then how our laws uh, came about and how this uh, Vishaka judgment came and what this uh, new legislation is about. Uh, it's not to deceive, deceive ourselves that, that there never existed sexual harassment before or before 80s or 70s or 60s. Uh, the, the truth is, uh, harassment of women has taken place all along. And uh, you can't really single out an instance of 1960 case or 70 case. It's a case that begins the era of sexual harassments. And the harassments took place differently. Uh, women did not compete in uh, public employments before, probably, as they are now doing. Therefore, you have more of them, their presence there in public spaces, you see them more. Uh, but then probably uh, in Esther years, or probably 100 years back or 200 years back, uh, their own uh, occupation was predominantly probably taking care of the household. If you're talking about in India, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, elsewhere, if you're talking about the Indian uh, typical family setup of where a woman works, uh, she works in the house. On, at a, probably at a lower uh, strata of society where they operate, they work as uh, agricultural laborers. It is uh, from a place where I come from, uh, from Tamil Nadu, I can say, that uh, uh, a village zameen, a zamindar or a person, uh, uh, you would uh, have no qualms about having a person there in the field, in the farm. Uh, uh, and uh, that is accepted. Uh, and uh, there, if there was a woman who was succumbing to a man, uh, a zamindar, it was just that she couldn't do anything else. Uh, she, it was a different kind of harassment. It was a harassment all the same. It was a harassment in the workplace. But then there is nothing like a system which you can respond to or where you can say that there is a, a, a mechanism to redressal of such a situation. So therefore, they existed at all times. So therefore, when uh, the, the issues of sexual harassment came and they were taken up, the response was, what is it that you're trying to do now? What, what, is, what is new now which you're, which you're uh, trying to say as that should be uh, uh, very seriously taken notice of? These are all things which will always happen, which has happened, being cut it and move on. Uh, being cut it and move on was the attitude. And that is what is the greatest uh, uh, malady now. Uh, even now, uh, you can see in almost all places, uh, if you take up the issue of sexual harassment, uh, work workplaces or domestic violence, uh, it's invariably the response is, what is this now? The, you are needlessly creating a hype. Uh, uh, this all happens. Uh, if there are women, they are uh, uh, bound to be winked at. What is your problem? They like it too. Or she really invited that. She, by her dress or overture, she did something that she invited a comment or she invited that kind of an harassment. She enjoyed it. Why do you worry? Enjoying a harassment is some way a kind of a defense. So therefore, we have brought several types of situations like that. These are always happened. This, uh, this, uh, this will happen and move on. We are not going to change. It will happen. So therefore, don't worry about it. Or this is not something which should be brought to uh, the center stage. There are so many other important things, are there not? And you don't merely trivialize something by saying there's something else which is more important. Poverty is more important. Why don't we talk about poverty? When we're talking about women harassment, you don't talk about immediately. Why not talk about poverty? Oh, surely we talk about poverty. But then that's not the occasion now we must be talking about. There are surely issues which, has to be, which have to be addressed. But then you're not going to do that at the cost of this as well. So therefore, uh, you will, you're bound to be receiving such responses. Probably the first uh, 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 effort that we must have is uh, how to fend off this uh, trivial comments which are, uh, which are addressed to us. I can still remember, uh, not uh, the resource of persons of who I see, I, I didn't see the, at the time. Uh, this was in the year 2008. Um, I was uh, going from uh, Chandigarh to Bombay. Uh, this was uh, the initial phases of when we were putting 
uh, we are exposing the same way as we are trying to show uh, what the uh, important features of this law uh, is. Uh, uh, domestic uh, Violence, Protection of Women Against Domestic Violence Act was just about the time it had uh, been brought out. So uh, judges had to be sensitized. People had to be told what is there, what are the important features there. So uh, I was going there the second day. Just this morning I was telling her. <coughs> Uh, the first day, there were young resource per persons from the Lawyers Collect who had uh, been doing the uh, sessions for the district judges of Maharashtra. Imagine, uh, uh, you have uh, district judges on your row, and uh, the persons who are addressing them were young uh, women motivated to your cause. Uh, surely they had something to say. So therefore, by the evening, by the time I arrived, uh, they were saying, sir, the day is just lost for us. I don't think there is going to be anything for us to redeem. So I was wondering, what is the problem? So therefore, domestic violence, when I say the domestic violence, uh, 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 it was there at the time when I was talking about. And I said, now, domestic violence, don't talk about men being harassed by women. And therefore, there is a domestic violence. There must, men also must have right. We'll probably talk about the legislation later. I start from the typical uh, way that our uh, uh, scriptures say, uh, niti, niti, this is not, this is not. I'm taking something as. What is not there? What is, there is nothing like a, a, a women's harass, a harassment, women getting harassed. If somebody will say, we'll just say now, come on. If you're going to be talking about men getting harassed, just keep it away. Now, we are going to be talking about this one. I'm worried about this, and this is something which has to be seen. There are bound to be uh, objections, bound to be talks of, uh, from persons who may trivialize what we are doing as something which is simply not there we are needlessly trying to create something as, uh, as though something as though something uh, uh, it exists it does exist everyone understands that and otherwise if it is not so you can't have in the same week when there was as serious an incident as what had happened in delhi about the nirbhaya incident on the same week you had yet another girl who was raped in the bus in a moving bus there's nothing which stops the same time as we are all talking about whether the India daughter uh, documentary must be released or not, a three-year-old child there in Haryana gets raped. Nothing changes. Uh, it, it all starts from a fundamental mindset of a patriarchy that a male is there to dominate. And if there is a woman who would rise up to ask a question, she ought to be snuffed out, she ought to be kicked, she ought to be silenced, she ought to be muted. Now, uh, this, is it going to change immediately? We need to see that it changes. Otherwise, it's not acceptable at all for us to be living. When we have a constitution now, if, in our uh, 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 constitution scheme of things, we recognize something. It is not as if it is only because of the constitution it exists. Even as otherwise, uh, men and women are equal is a precept which is so natural, which is so obvious, that if we are going to be now saying it does, it is not true, and it is only the constitution which has made it possible, I would only uh, uh, say it's a, it's uh, it's so untenable that it is not even uh, possible to be making an argument about that and bringing reasons as to how they are equal. I just take it as self-evident. I don't require someone to say uh, sun is bright because it is bright and it has to be proved how much of light is there, how much of heat is there. It is self-evident. I would like to believe that men and women are equal as self-evident in every way that it is possible. Scientifically, biologically, they all say uh, that uh, there is in fact probably a better chance that more chance that a, a child is born as a female than a male or even in the uh, chromosomal uh, combination, they, I think uh, there is a dominant uh, female male uh, which exists than as a, uh, as a male. So therefore, um, that is not even a talk. But then, for us, uh, the, the same way, if I carry a lineage, uh, we say uh, anything, you see a lineage through uh, a, a guru, a paramaguru, a parameshti guru. So therefore, if you are seeing something like a legislation, uh, when you are seeing a leg rule as something which is putting it to place, uh, and then if it is a guru for that, it is an act. And if you are looking for somewhere there, a paramaguru, paramaguru is something like uh, what, what really gives birth to this and who makes that possible? It is a constitution. Probably still further as an international law as to what makes it obligated and apart, obligatory and apart to have a legislation like that. So therefore, uh, I thought I'll just give you some constitutional uh, backdrop to the whole thing and then point out also to some of uh, the aspects of international law obligation that uh, compel us or which would require us to have a legislation like this. 
And therefore, uh, we know some of uh, the important things of what our constitution lays down and what was taken as the basis for Vishaka guidelines. In uh, Vishaka, uh, look at how uh, the whole thing has happened. Uh, a, a person working in Rajasthan in a village, uh, she carries uh, a campaign against child marriage. And uh, she's just a, uh, a humble um, a person, um, uh, uh, a social worker. And it couldn't be tolerated. Now, here is a person who wants to change our lifestyle, who wants to change our beliefs, wants to change our life systems. So this is, will not be acceptable. And it is the simplest thing for them to say is to simply stop your work or make her not come. The matter could have therefore stopped. Uh, if, you, if you believe that a person, what is, more, what is simpler than merely uh, asking that woman not to come? Or to say, now you will not come anywhere here and then make your lessons or do anything like that. She would have simply stopped probably. Or she could have simply been stated, if you are coming the next day, I'm going to knock you off. Then probably she, could have, she would have been knocked out or she couldn't have come there. But then they did something more. They just didn't stop her. They violated her. They violated her modesty. They raped her. The idea was to create such a serious scar that she would never, not merely to her, to everyone else, with similar, mot similar motivations, to do something, to do something for the society to see that these kind of uh, child marriages don't happen. It cannot be merely that woman stop being stopped. It will not be any woman who will take the courage to come. And that is the kind of a message which they were trying to give when they were doing this. Look at again uh, how sensitive the situation was, that if it was a case of a gang rape, and if there was a criminal case which was registered and the progress of investigation went on and uh, uh, convicted or acquittal, it was happening, they should have ended. It was merely a case of a person being, an individual being ravished and a criminal case process being set in motion and then the work is taken up somewhere. But then it didn't stop. And therefore, uh, when a case came and said, uh, this is not appropriate, we need to see. There was a women's organization which was prepared to see that this is a problem, this is a danger in a workplace, and therefore we need some law in order to see that this kind of a thing does not happen, a recurrence does not happen. Any other judge would have probably said the ways, because I, I come from the judiciary, I realize how uh, people respond. There is a difference from how I was there about 10 years back as a lawyer, and how I see uh, the things, have, uh, how my brother, brother judges feel about so many things. Uh, and therefore, if there was a judge at the time who was looking beyond a mere problem, a problem of a person who was raped and therefore there was a case and whether it's an acquittal or a conviction, whether the investigation was properly done or not, beyond that he was prepared to go. He was looking beyond a particular case. And it was again not a, 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 any instance of a rape taking place in any particular working place for her. It was probably she was raped in the dark, ra raped in a, f a field, not in the place where she was working, where she was working probably from house to house she was going there. There were therefore judges who were looking beyond that and they said something which was very important. All that they said was they brought this Vishaka guidelines within the four corners of the constitutional jurisprudence. They said Article 14 provides equality. And uh, uh, it ensures, it protects equality, and then equal protection of laws also there. And therefore, it is evident that women must, Article 14 talks about a non-discrimination, and it talks about equality. Non-discrimination must mean that in a workplace, for a person where he works, it must be a feeling where a person feels equal, does not feel restricted, fettered in any way. Seen in a context of, again, when we are talking about equality, Article 14, we talk about 15 and 16. 15, which makes possible for a state to make special laws for women and children in, in the matters of education and other areas. And Article 16 about public employments. These are expressions of Article 14. All of us know this, and then I'm saying something which is so fundamental again. And th this 14, 15, 16, all, uh, it, it didn't stop there. The, the, the Supreme Court went one step more. Seeing the issue of equality there, seen through the prism of Article 14. Article 19, a freedom of 14, one, 20, uh, 19, 1 G is what it stated as an area which must be focused, which must be seen. A right to freedom to work, to carry on an avocation, 
the way the person wants. That freedom must happen. It will have a meaning only if a person has a safe environment to work. Therefore, if there is not going to be a safe environment, there is not going to be a protection for a person, and if that person could be harassed or cannot take an independent, independent decision, there could be something seriously wrong. The, the Supreme Court did not actually articulate that 191G as other ramifications as well. But then we all know that it's just not 191G. Uh, then you have also all the connected articles, a right to freedom of speech, for instance, or what is stated there. Freedom is also there, which will have an important, important bearing on a right to uh, employment or avocation. Or freedom of her uh, movement, where she can go, uh, where she must be there. That also is uh, decided by that. Uh, again, you will have yet another article in the uh, uh, Article 19. Under Article 19 itself, uh, you have uh, the freedom to from associations, freedom of speech and expression, to move, uh, move fru freely throughout the territory of India. All these are also to be seen as something uh, which uh, falls from that. And uh, apart from that, uh, Vishaka also looked at uh, as important uh, an article as Article 21, the uh, norm which will see through. Uh, the right to life as, uh, again, uh, something which is so important. In fact, Article 21 has been given uh, such an expanded meaning. We have seen through Article 21 several of uh, uh, the judicial pronouncements. Uh, your uh, uh, right to good health, right to life is just not merely any life, right to dignified life. So Article 21 seen as something uh, the, uh, so important, so basic. So uh, a woman who is not treated well, a person who does not have safety, uh, then she, is, uh, she loses even a right to life, a dignified life. So therefore, Article 21 is also something which is immediately seen uh, as important, which is the basis for all this. Now, we are used to uh, examining all rights as uh, flowing from something. Uh, every right has a meaning. Uh, only uh, if you correspond it with some duty. And uh, duty it is for me, which is very important because uh, in India, at least uh, uh, conventionally, we believe uh, that uh, rights, uh, the expression of rights uh, is more uh, uh, the, uh, the vindication of rights, the assertion of rights. Uh, it's all a Western concept. Uh, uh, for us, it's all duties. That's one thought like that, at least. Uh, we, we, we all believe that our society moved more on duties essentially as uh, uh, governing our mutual uh, relationships than rights. It is not uh, totally wrong. Our approach had not at all times been uh, that there is a right, you need to enforce it. There is probably, it start, there can never be a right if there is not a duty to someone else. But what, what lends primacy to our living? What is so important to us? Uh, everyone recognizes and, uh, and so is also our constitution when it uh, makes uh, what are the duties are. Article uh, 51A. So therefore, uh, a duty to respect women uh, must be seen as being reflected through the, the rights which some the women themselves have or how we must respond to those duties. And uh, the, in the scheme of the constitution, all of us know uh, when uh, our uh, Supreme Court has uh, addressed many of our rights uh, under uh, the uh, chapter 3, uh, through uh, chapter 4, what was originally seen, we have uh, com come through a constitutional jurisprudence where we have recognized that uh, directive principles of state policy assume enormous significance and importance in that what really directs the state to do a particular thing is always uh, very important. And uh, uh, we have, therefore, Article 41, 41, which limits the economic capacity and development, make effective provision for securing right to work. That is important. Article 31, uh, 38 enjoins the state to uh, secure social order, which promotes social, economic, and political justice. Then Article 42, 42, which ensures provision for just and human conditions of work and maternity relief. Now, therefore, you will find that when the uh, Supreme Court was uh, Referring to Visakha guidelines, it said at that time, uh, if th there is a particular area where uh, there is no uh, uh, legislation at all, constitution recognizes certain things, and the international law obligations also require us 
to have a certain, uh, 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 certain institutions. We don't have them. Therefore, if we don't have, we'll therefore have a legislation till a legislation comes. Therefore, when uh, the Supreme Court was uh, referring to it, some of the expressions there which have immense meaning, and therefore I'll just flag those areas. It says uh, to strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity. Uh, then uh, it says uh, uh, to develop a scientific temper, to protect and improve, promote harmony and spirit of common brotherhood among all people transcending religious, linguistic, regional, or sectional diversities, to renounce practices derogatory, derogatory to the dignity of women. Th this is 51A class E, talks about a duty which you will see as uh, uh, your, uh, con uh, your, uh, your, uh, the other side, a mirror image of what uh, would be there in order that you have the rights properly exercised. <coughs> in, the, in the Supreme Court, among other things, some of these expressions uh, which it uh, referred to was gender equality includes protection from sexual harassment and right to work with dignity, which is universally recognized basic human right. A universally recognized basic human right is a right to work and free from sexual harassment. This is how the, the Supreme Court would put that and sees this, sees this in this context. Provisions of the Convention of Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. <coughs> and uh, Article 11 there, because you'll know what the source is. See, uh, certain things are so well evident. It is like Rama and Mahabharat, which we keep uh, talking about, hear about. We know the story, we'll still hear that. It's a sem something similar to that. What we know, we still see this because we hear this, because it, uh, it needs uh, to be strongly etched in our memories. Article 11, which says, state parties shall take appropriate measures. This is what obligates India. Uh, uh, Article 11 of the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. It says, all parties shall take appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination against women in the field of employment in order to ensure on a basis of equality of men and women the same rights in particular, the right to work in an inalienable right of all human beings the right to protection of health and safety in working conditions, including the safeguarding and the function of reproduction. So therefore, it contemplates two things, that there shall be a, a, a discrimination shall be completely eliminated. The right to work is an inalienable right, and that shall be without any fetter. In fact, Vishaka did just two judgments. Surprisingly, one judgment was a right to compensation. There is nothing very, very unusual. Uh, a right to compensation or what will be uh, provided. And there are two other judgments which keep uh, uh, coming about. We need to just know them. Even before Vishaka came, even before this case was uh, there, there was yet another case. Uh, that was a case about uh, a, a person in Delhi. I think it was a person in Delhi. Uh, she, was, uh, uh, she, was just, uh, she had just then joined. Uh, the, it was a public, uh, it was a export promotion council, apparel export pr promotion council, and uh, there was uh, a secretary to the chairman who took with uh, 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 with him uh, a, a girl, a young girl of 23 years who had ju just then joined, and uh, she said uh, she didn't know steno uh, typing. And uh, when some passage was dictated, uh, she said she didn't know. But then he said, no, you'll take down. He made a takedown. I said, I'll be there by your side and see that you type well. He said, no, I'll take care. No, no, I'll come with you. So this man goes along with, uh, 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 with her to a place in the basement where there was a typing uh, done. He seats himself very close to her, says, no, don't come so close. No, he probably makes an attempt to touch her. He uh, fends off uh, that kind of overture as well. And then uh, it gets to be so uh, obtrusive in his uh, ways, uh, she says, no, if you're going to behave like this, I'm, I'm going to get away from this. This is what happens. Then she gives a complaint and then tells him, here is a man who is harassing me, uh, who attempted to molest me. He, he, he attempted to uh, do things which are inappropriate. There was an investigation uh, done immediately. The person was uh, kept under suspension, and ultimately the uh, charges, uh, the uh, allegations made by the woman were found to be uh, true in that inquiry, and was served with an order of dismissal from service. 
Now, look at how our courts will normally look. I'm talking about uh, a person as a judge in a court, <laughs> as to how I look at things in a court. When a matter comes up before me in a, a writ jurisdiction, the arguments which are time and again placed as this. The, the rules of natural justice have been completely flouted. The court is, uh, uh, the inquiry has gone to a stage which is not, um, uh, which is not proper. Uh, the inquiry has misdirected itself to areas which it ought not to have considered. It ultimately delivered a judgment which is so capricious in nature that it cannot be sustained.